Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Dina Hijazi, the other D in the D2 counseling. I just wanna welcome you, Daniel. I think you covered most of um, what we do. We just offer a wide range of services, age three to 93 and lots of groups, workshops, um, individual couples and groups. So uh, we welcome you to look at our website if you have any needs or needs of your clients. We're um, really grateful that you all are here. We've, uh, because of this COVID situation, we've had an increase and then a decrease and an increase and a decrease in, in attendance. And Daniel and I are both so committed to bringing good therapists to the um, Dallas Metroplex and doing, having people present on topics that are really practical and um, user-friendly, and we want to continue that. So please tell your friends about this, tell your colleagues about this, so that we can keep up our attendance and keep this series going. And that's all I have. Thanks. With that, Katrina, I want to thank you again for presenting. You're always one of my favorites. I learn a lot from you, and I'll let you introduce yourself, but we do want to thank you for um, your presentation tonight and your service in helping uh, to do a presentation here with us. So with that, take us away and educate us. Okay. Well, thank you for having me, first of all. I think when I um, was considering a title for tonight, I didn't imagine we would be in this position. I anticipated we would be at the Unity Church and this would be a live lecture, which is much easier for sociodrama and psychodrama and all that kind of stuff. And so one of the things I would also say is I can see people are, you know, we're just getting started. It's just a little after seven. And um, in order for me to do what I do, um, I hope that people will choose to be a visible and present I know we've gotten into a, a time where it's everybody sits down and puts things on but isn't really with us. And I'm going to be looking for the community. There's Becky. Hi, Becky. <laughs> Hi, Libby. It looks like we got to ride home with you from wherever you're coming from. So that's great. And there's Tina. And so as we're we're moving along, I'm going to ask people to plan different roles. So I totally get it if you're in a place where you can't participate and you're just here to listen and there will be, of course, no dis, um, disharmony about that. But if you're able to participate, you might end up being a storyteller tonight because that's what psychodrama and sociodrama is about. And it's about hearing the voice of our community and the voice of our group. And um, I'm going to attempt to be outside here. My hair is going to be pretty intense, perhaps. Um, and I've got a little light here, so I should be able to be out here for quite a while. But if it gets too dark or too windy, I might have to move myself about. Um, but I figure what a great opportunity to enjoy our Texas weather with our little cool front. So I don't know all who is here who knows what sociodrama is or what psychodrama is. So I'll start talking a little bit about that and myself. And so I um, came to the field really probably to figure out how to make myself better or understand why I was so, um, um, why I was having the struggles I was. I think psychology opened that up for me. I took a course and my, my college roommate asked if I was like, um, having some sort of relationship with the professor. And so I said, no, I just think psychology is super interesting. And I'm learning a lot about myself. And um, instead of becoming a teacher or a lawyer, that's kind of where my track took me. And I would say the similar thing about psychodrama for myself is that I was trying to determine what kind of graduate work, graduate work I might want to do. And in that process, I took a class where somebody was doing some psychodrama. And I thought, oh gosh, this is bizarre. I don't know what I think about this. But he encouraged me, Don Wickshutter Cruz, encouraged me to go and take a course in Austin with Mort and Dorothy Satin, who were psychodrama teachers. And so I, I had that privilege and that was just a neat opportunity. And 
in that weekend in front of 30 or 40 people, I ended up being somebody telling my own story. And I was certainly living out of my woundedness. So it wasn't a very pretty part of my story. And so as I worked through that and learned the model of using theater and movement and psychology to tell somebody's story, I just saw myself more clearly when I was asked to look at myself through the eyes of another person, I understood who I was differently. And so that's what psychodrama is. Psychodrama is the, the psyche is uh, about your brain and how that operates and how you behave and how you're, the patterns of your life. And drama means change. And so we talk about how do we change our patterns? How do we recreate or redecide a different way of being in the world? And so psychodrama is would be one person's story, whereas sociodrama is the story of the society, which is what I'd like to play with tonight, which is why, you know, at a certain point, the more available people can be, the more playful we can have our evening. And I think we just meet till 830. Is that right, Daniel? Yeah. So and we can go, you know, we get close to eight or a little bit afterwards. If you want to leave time for questions, that works as well. But it's entirely up to you. You have all the power. Okay. Oh, watch out. Me and power. That's a dangerous spot. So I'll probably try to end or wrap up whatever we're doing uh, shortly after eight and offer time for questions and so forth. So, so psychodrama is one person's story. For example, Becky. Becky, where is it you're, you're at right now? What's the name of your city there? I'm in Amarillo, Texas. Amarillo, Texas. So the title of this workshop is about a year in review. If you were to consider your year in review, what are three words you might use to communicate something about your year? Mm. Isolated, mm -hmm. travel, uh, busy. Busy. Okay. How about for you, Libby? If you were to um, share with us, where are you calling from, Libby? Where are you at? We can't hear you. Daniel, do you, do you, do you have to take her okay. off? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. yes. I'm in Charleston, West Virginia. Okay, great. This year has been lonely, mm -hmm. a lot of traveling. Uh, back and forth to see my granddaughter and I don't know survival I did it I'm on the other side yeah, of this year <laughs> on the other side absolutely. Yeah. absolutely yeah I'm having fun now so good see Daniel if we were like in Dallas we have two people that wouldn't be with us already and I think <laughs> I think that's probably true for Tina also Tina aren't you in California well, she's driving. Maybe Sorry, should... yes. No, I'm not driving. I am sitting here. Oh, okay, uh, I am. I'm from Santa Cruz, California, but I'm an hour from home right now under an airport, so <laughs> it could get loud. Okay. Yeah. What would your three words be? My three know? words would be um, growing and learning and camping. I like that. Okay. Yeah. So and camping is sort of like traveling, right? Like, I, yeah, I'm yeah, dirty traveling. traveling. <laughs> yes. yes, yeah. How about for you, Jan? Where are you calling from? Jan, can yes. you hear me now? Yes. Yes. yes, okay. I'm calling from Rockwall, Texas. Ah, yes, that's what you said a moment ago. So, what would your three words be, Jan? You know, um, I, I think. Uh, isolated would be one of them because I and uh, I, th this has been a difficult year for me. I'm uh, retired. I'm 79 mm -hmm. years old. Yeah. And uh, it's brought uh, lots of things to light for me to look at. Uh, yeah, it lots of things to uh, to deal with and uh, it, actually to the point of I was thinking of calling D2 
and uh, maybe coming for uh, some type of counseling. Yeah, <laughs> great. Uh, counseling it. for uh, yes. counseling for the elderly. Yes, transition therapy. Transition. That's therapy. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, excellent, excellent. Well, hopefully, Jan, tonight you can get a little more gas in your tank. That would always be the hope for an event like this. Thank and I'm you. just going to check on those whose faces are here. And no shame to anybody who's not showing their face or adding their camera. But I will work primarily with the people who I can see because I know that they're ready. I'm assuming that they're ready to do something with us, to play with us. So Marlene, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Frisco. Ah, just down the street. I'm in McKinney. Oh, yeah, you're right by me. Great. Okay, and so what would your three words be? I would say rust in some part mm -hmm. of the year. Um, just to be <laughs> transparent, but yep. then resilient because I have had some challenging moments and a lot of, maybe not a lot, but some self-awareness. Mm -hmm. So I'll just yeah. say self-awareness. Well, we've been hearing that theme, right? We've been hearing the theme mm -hmm. of growth, survival. We also heard the theme of isolated or lonely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a, a an trying year. Now, Christy, I know you're not in Texas. Where are you calling from, Christy? I am. I'm in San Antonio. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I feel like you're so far away, but five hours is a long ways away. It feels a long ways away. Yeah. What are your three words, Christy? So uh, permission to use colorful language. <laughs> yeah. Bye yeah. by me. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, when you said that, I'm just going to give you the first three words that came to mind, and that's, that's kind of where I'm going to sit with, and it's uh, shit, fire, and hell. <laughs> and I can't, okay. I can't decide yeah. if shit, fire is one word hyphenated or <laughs> if it's shit, fire, and hell, but I think you get the point. I, yeah. We do. We do. Yeah. yeah. And I think if, if you can't curse a little here with good friends, where can you? So I say it's just fine. All right. Oh, Sean, there you are. How about for you, Daniel? Do you have three words that you would offer? I would say um, harried, concerned, and um, dedicated. Yes. Har harried, definitely. Dedicated, <laughs> absolutely. A new level of commitment has emerged, I think, for a lot of our society. A new level, as Marlene said, of self-evaluation and self-growth in a, a way that nobody thought they would have to wonder about. How about for you, Dina? Um, the first word is tried, mm -hmm. which... Yeah is not tried like I tried, it's I've been tried, I've been challenged, um, um, over challenged, <laughs> stretched, um, yeah. change, and the third word is change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tried, tried, tested, change. Yeah. Change something, change everything. Yeah, okay, Sean. How, what are where are you calling from, Sean? And what are your three words that when you think of the year in review of this last year, this last twelve months, what might you use for your words? I'm calling from uh, Fairview, about eight minutes from your house. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right down, yeah, right down the street. Uh, my year in review. I, I, when when I think of this, I think of more of my personal experience than what's going on in the world around me because That's I've got okay. nothing, not a lot positive to say about that. So let's go shit show on the external okay, and uh, internal growth and confidence. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. So for the rest of you who are out there, we know you're there, but I'd like everybody who's participating tonight to just really consider for a moment as you consider your year in review these last 12 months, you know, what are those three words? And just, just hold them dear as we're in this lecture tonight. And the hope would be that everybody gets just a little more gas in their tank or maybe a little bit different perspective um, where they are or where they're going 
with what's happening here. And so again, so psychodrama is the idea about telling one person's story. So I had started with Becky. And so if we were to listen to her story about why those were her three words and everybody in the group and in, in this particular group of people would participate. So somebody would play the role of her, what we call a double, which is um, like her inside voice or her heart of hearts. Some people might say her inner child, if you um, think under that term. Um, or her wise self, depending on what it is she needs to hear and whoever she might need to talk to. And so then the sociodrama is the drama of the society. And Sean, you mentioned, you know, when I'm thinking about the community and outside, you know, th that's a different experience and how I feel about that versus what's going on for me internally. Um, Cause there's been a lot of um, growth, challenging and positive, I think for people. I know as a clinician, we have been busier than ever treating people who are in reflection or struggling and so forth. And, you know, one of the dilemmas I run into is the psychodrama I work with usually is in person and big groups, then we're creating scenes and we're moving about. And I was um, actually with Becky, not that, just a few months ago and really reviewing what a loss it's been to not be able to be in person and um, and then kind of how it's interesting to get a little more creative. Um, how, how do I show up to offer what the skill is on a computer as opposed to mm -hmm. in the office room? Or I've been doing a lot of psychodrama right here in my backyard. In fact, I'll be doing that soon here with um, a few of you members who are on here will actually visit my backyard and we'll do psychodrama back here. And um there's always some something meaningful that happens. Uh, even here, I can use my dog. <laughs> I, I allow my dog to become um, a word. For example, the last piece of work we did here in the backyard, somebody said, well, if the dog comes up to my piece of work, my psychodrama, the dog will be comfort. So we said, great. So, and then I don't think she's out here right now. Harley. Nope. I don't see her. She's not visiting us, but um, whenever she came around, we all just said, oh, there's comfort. Why do you suppose comfort is showing up now? And um, so that's one of the things that's been so fun um, doing psychodrama here, being able, and we would do it up in the trees and use walking across the water or people could put their feet in the water and I have a balcony up top and people would go up there and speak from the heavens or from above or sometimes from wisdom and so that's kind of how we would do it here so instead we're going to do sociodrama tonight and that's the drama of the society um and so I was thinking about this and talking to a friend about what this year has been like and when they think of the year in review and the person said I think of waves you know I think that you know there was waves of COVID and new waves of COVID and I, I know I've had people who I've loved very sick with COVID or long haul with the COVID or I've even had people that I know personally die of COVID so COVID has been part of year and it, we've had an enormous call around our social choices what are we doing to take care of ourselves to take care of people we care about or to take care of our society and then there could also be a wave of belief do you believe that do you not believe that there's been so much polarity in what's true and what's not true or how somebody says it and how somebody does or doesn't do something. And so there have been waves everywhere. And I'm an extrovert. So um, quarantining has been challenging for me, but I know a lot of introverts that have just enjoyed the heck out of this time and said, oh my gosh, this has been so amazing. And I've had colleagues that say, I'm never going to go back in the office. I love doing therapy on Zoom. And I'm just going, oh, no, 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 no. I can't. I have got to be in front of people. Please put me in front. Of in fact, I actually 
never stop seeing people in person during this whole experience. I don't know whether I'm saying that and I sound like a buffoon or whether I sound like I'm brave or I don't know, but um, that was my personal choice. And if clients wanted to join me in that, then great for them. And if they didn't, we figured out a different way. So waves is what I've, I'm bringing to you today, the idea of waves. And so I wonder, as each of you think of, you've given three words, but I wonder about a wave. You know, there are a lot of waves. There's a tsunami. Um, my name is Katrina, right? So some people say I'm like a hurricane. There's water that comes in a hurricane. It's a little bit different. Um, there's ripple waves, like little tiny waves that just move about the water, right? And then waves that are loud and crashing against rocks. Um, in fact, that's where Becky and I got to meet each other. We were in Maine and the waves were just stunning there, just beautiful. And then sometimes in the morning, the waves were just soft and like a song. And so I wonder for each of you, when you think of waves and the wave of this last year, would each of you be willing to say, and you, you can pass, but if you'd like to share something, I'll, I'll do it that way instead of forcing anybody to say anything. If you would like to share something, a moment where you felt a wave, and it can be a wave that was comforting or overwhelming or shocking, or it could have just been just this slight learning of self-reflection or growth or a wave of loneliness. So if you'd like to share something, I think there's, is there a way for people to put like their little hand up on their thing there? Is that true, Daniel? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I don't know the answer to that. It's over my head, but they can they can certainly wave if they're on camera. It's don't in worry. reactions. It's in reactions. You put Ray's hand, like my well, hand's up. Well, I got Libby there. I see Libby's hand. I'm going to go with a real hand. But uh, if somebody knows how to share one and they want to share something, feel free to use reactions like Sean said. So, but Libby, what would you tell us? Tell us about a wave of something. You'll need to unmute, Libby. Yep, unmute. We can't Libby. hear you. We can't Libby. hear you, Libby. She can't, un she, can she not unmute? I'm trying to fix it here. Okay. Sometimes it gets frozen. Hang on, Libby, we're trying. Yeah, I'm not seeing how I can do that. Uh-oh. Sean, can you fix this? <laughs> I wonder why she can't. Un can, uh, can any other people unmute right now? Yeah, others have done that. Okay, others are unmuting. And Libby was on with us a bit ago. I can unmute. Can you hear me, Katrina? Yes. Is that you, Libby? No, that's Chris. That was Sam. Okay, I Libby. She, I think she's holding up a Libby. message. What's her message? Can anybody see that? I can't read it. Yeah, I can't read I it. Love, I love that you're communicating. Maybe you could chat it. She to says us the host there. muted me. The host yeah. muted her. And I cannot figure out how to unmute here. Uh-oh. Well, this is kind of like the year, right? <laughs> Daniel, if, Maybe you go she can her, open. if you go to participants yeah, and I'm click there. on yeah. her name, right. and it says more. Right. And if you can't do it that way, Libby, un just log off and log back on. And there under participants is also the raise hand option. Yeah, I've tried every way I know how, Libby. I can't, I cannot uh, figure out how to do this. So, so Libby, if you want to hop off and hop back on, we would love to hear about your wave. <laughs> but, okay, so Christy, you've got your hand up. Oh, there you are. Yes, okay. there you are. When I pushed the screen on that it let me unmute after he unmuted me, so. Gotcha. When All you right. said wave, what came to me was just how a wave came crashing over me like I felt like I was drowning. And then, you know, you stand up in the wave 
and it washes past you and then you're up you're standing up but you're still in the water and you're still in the deep end yeah, yeah. but you're rising above you know you you survive that way then you stand you stand you stand up that's yeah. okay yeah i love that i think that's a great image and that tells us a lot or is anybody else felt that way if you felt that way bring both hands up so we can see you so this is kind of okay Hold them hands up so we can see you. And it's okay if that's not how you felt, but that way, Libby, you can know kind of other people in this group. Yep, we got some hands up there. I can't see y'all. I can't see all the people, just you. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I see one, two. I saw Lisa, three, four. I saw four people, five, me with hands up. Okay. All right. Thank you, Libby, for that. Christy, how about for you? You got your little hand up there. What would you tell us about a moment in this year that has felt like a wave? And you can tell us anything you want. Okay, so um, my my mom had a stroke earlier this year. Oh. And so my wave is, it's I feel like it's in one of those very controlled water park, theme park yeah. things. Yes. And the, the wave's very controlled. And you know when it's coming, but it's still the kind that knocks you over, but it feels like it has boundaries to it. So I know it's coming, it's knocking me over, and I got to get back up, and I wait for the next one. Very interesting. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, anybody else have felt that, like with Christy? If so, bring both hands up so she can see. I, I see one, two, three. Christy, I don't know. If, can you see them all? I can only hold up one hand. Yes, me too. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, all right. So I'm looking for somebody else who'd like to share. Now, Kim Patterson, I saw your hand up. I don't know if that's because you'd like to share about a wave for you that you've experienced or you just were identifying that you understood Christy. I was trying to start my video also. So can y'all hear me okay? We can, yeah. All right. So my entire year has been a wave. Um, yeah. it, it literally felt like almost as soon as I could stand up and almost catch a breath, everything just not completely right back out from underneath me. And you flip through that for a little while and you finally start getting your feet back on the ground and all over again. Stopped. It's like since December, it has never stopped. It's just constantly been like that. So yeah, I still feel like I'm kind of caught but in the ocean, but yeah, in this wave that's, it's, at times it feels like it's kicking my butt and other times I feel like I've kind of found something I can grab a hold of and float for a little while. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's tough. It's very yeah. tough. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, if you understand what Kim's saying, get those hands up so she can see. I see two, three, four, yeah. five, yeah. six people. Oh, there's Rosie. So lots of people, Kim, that really identify with what you're saying there. All right. Anybody else, as we're just talking about the year in review, and if there's been a time where you felt some sort of wave, or it could be a small little wave that still had important learning. Jan, what do you got for us? What would you share? You know, um, like so many others have said here, the whole year has, or year and a half, has just been one huge wave and it, it, there's an ebb and flow to the waves. Uh, sometimes if it would stay like a ripple, ripple can, you can kind of feel like you can get your footing if you have a ripple and it's kind of calming, but no, it, it just constantly goes from, most of the time it has not been a ripple. Most of the time it's been just a huge knock you off your feet wave, yeah. just one thing and another. And part of the wave is you, I felt like the planet uh, has been surrounded by a wave that um, it, you talk to, I'm amazed at what people think and how they are thinking mm -hmm. about different subjects regarding this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been, um, it's been a very difficult year and a half. Yep. Yes, yes. And I love how you added the extra half a year. It's been a difficult year and a half. Mm -hmm. I think sure. we're, I feel like this month is exactly uh, 
1.5 years since March right. when we, when all this happened. Right. Um, March 13th. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. I was scheduled to be in Hong Kong to teach psychodrama that weekend <laughs> or that week. And as you, we all know, Hong Kong was full of COVID before we really understood it quite here. And I remember I've, I've been in supervision meetings and telling people, we got to prepare for this. And my colleagues were like, oh, what are you talking about? That's nothing. And a week later that people are texting me and saying, how did you know that? I was like, um, I don't know. I just kind of knew like it was coming. It was clear, but you know, we, we couldn't really know, could we? I mean, we, we certainly, I know we started another psychodrama group here in Dallas a few weeks ago and didn't really think about that this new, new version of COVID would show up as a whole nother wave. And, and then how do we do that? Um, so thanks, Jan. Anybody else have a wave that they'd like to share? Um, something about your year. Yeah, Sean, go ahead. I, uh, I had COVID a few weeks ago and it was, I had it the first time around too, but this was different. It was just stretched out. And towards the second week, the lethargy was just overwhelming me because I couldn't do the things that keep me sane. And uh, I was suicidal for about 10 years and I hadn't really felt that way about it. And when that popped up, you know, I was so sick and I was just, that like popped into my mind as an option. And I was thinking, you've been through way worse than this and pick, pick yourself up by the bootstraps, you can keep going. So it just, uh, you know, it affirmed the things I've done to try to stay strong. And uh, I don't think I would have been able to go through that if I hadn't been through some of the trials of my life. So, but it was a huge wave. And I was like, yeah, I remember what these feel like. You remember. So it was okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it comes back to what Dina was saying in a way that we, we've been tied and tr- tried and tested through this experience. I think as individuals, as family units, and as a community, whether it's I know I'm in the healing community and I know several of you are, are involved in that community or interested in that community as well, but every community has been tested and tried right now. And we're all trying to figure out how to really hold ourselves up. Does anybody else, when you think of this last year to year and a half, we can go ahead and extend it. Want to say something about a moment where you felt a wave. And again, it couldn't be it could be a positive moment or a, a light ripple. It doesn't have to be a tsunami. Anybody else? If so, just raise your hand. So, okay, Becky, yes, you're next. Actually, most of my waves this year have been positive. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because it causes me to feel a little bit of guilt because I am painfully aware because I'm a therapist that we are in the midst of a global pandemic and there's lots of not positive waves going on through a lot of people's lives. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of things that have been positive for me. Um, just the awareness that I don't have to maintain a, a busy social schedule, that I, my, my life won't come to an end if I don't make it to every live music event in town or those types of things. There's just not as much, not as many options. So it's been a lot more peaceful, a little bit. Lowered expectations, maybe. Yeah. Um, I have been extremely busy. So the flip side of that is a financial wave that has been positive. Uh, One of the things I remember you talking about in Maine was when do you spend your money? (laughs) And so that actually has had a very positive effect on me. And I've invested in some really fun properties and done some fun things. And I've invested a lot of money in myself and my training and my business and my retirement. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to ride the wave. Yes, that's right. Ride this wave. And, and how, do, how can you expand yourself or expand what's around you to have more of what you need? Okay, Skylar. Hi, Skylar. I see you in there. I am so privileged. I know a lot of you that are on this call and I'm getting to know some people that I didn't know. So Skylar, can you tell us about your wave? Um, so mine started last year, especially whenever the pandemic started, um, all last summer, I became very depressed because like I wasn't able to hang out with friends and I became like very suicidal, just didn't want to be here. And then I met my ex-boyfriend and he like made me very happy. So like for the past 10 months, I was like very happy with him. And then he just broke up with me about two and a half weeks ago. Yeah. And so 
past two and a half weeks, it's been world worlds of like emotions, like very happy moments and very sad moments. And then just like, I don't know, it's felt really weird. And I don't know. I just, yeah. Yeah. Well, Skylar, now what grade are you in, honey? You, you're in Dallas. So what, what grade are you I'm, in? What grade? I'm a junior in high school. Junior in high school. So I'm so glad that you're with us because you're a voice that we all know exists. And, you know, a lot of times in groups like this, we don't get to hear from the younger generation. And so I really hope that you stay vocal with us because we, we have multiple generations here and we want to understand the community from all sorts of viewpoints. We don't have a lot of dudes on here, uh, but we do have Sean and we do have Daniel. Um, see, I don't see any other, any other dudes on camera right now. Um, but it's important to hear from all voices and all different um, walks. Oh, and Harley, Harley made it. Come here, Harley. Come on, come say hi. No, can you hear? So I'm wondering if Harley comes, uh, she can't get up here. That's, she's big dog. Here, I'll try. There she is. So that's Harley. So if Harley comes through here, can you see her? She's like, oh. hi, She's Harley. Like, oh. Hi, Harley. So if Harley shows up in our drama tonight, what is it we're needing? So we can hear about being tested and tried, isolation and loneliness. And as Becky is saying, some great opportunities financially or to do something you might not have normally done. Or we've heard about suicide and feeling overwhelmed. So if Harley shows up, what is she communicating to us? What do we need to imagine? Anybody? I like that she was comfort originally. I, she, that, that still, that thread still runs through my yeah. needs. Yeah. So comfort, perhaps. Is there something other than comfort that somebody thinks we're needing in our society right now that she could benefit? She could. Responsibility. Uh, responsibility that's what a dog reminds me of responsibility yeah need that in our society that? right now <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely anything else comfort oh. responsibility Chrissy, loyalty what is it? yeah how about acceptance loyalty wow. acceptance wow. yeah hope hope Somebody. yeah is that, is that rosie i heard hope from jan maybe Clarity. Clarity. Well, Harley, you got a big, big job here. Are you ready uh, for it? Okay. Okay. She's a connection, that's... community. Connection. Community. Yeah. Nurturing. Right? Okay. All right, Harley, you can get down now. So I'll let you know when she comes on over to visit us. So are you going to hang out here, right here with us? It's too bad it's so dark. Usually you can see her running up in the forest, but um, it's late at night here. So, all right. So we're talking right now about what the waves have been and how the waves have really been hard, whether it's on high schoolers or people who are retiring right now, or just those of us just trying to get through the week, you know, get, get our academia done or, or do our work or... or I know for me, trying to figure out how to do my work in a different way, if I can't do it in person, and I still love my work, well, how do I do it in a way that is still useful to people and it still is filling me up so that I can be present the way I want to be present for myself? So when I listen to you guys, I hear a lot of big waves, right? And I hear uh, some smaller waves. And so when we think of our society or the year in review in our society, I suppose when you think of the wave that came, let's go all the way back. We'll go take it back a year and a half since that seems so relevant. Well, maybe we even go two years back. So if you think maybe six months before COVID, so I suppose that would be about this time two years ago, right? So everybody was moving along, getting ready for the holidays and so forth. 
what do you think the waves might have sounded like then? We, we had a lot going on in our culture, a lot of political stuff going on in our culture. So what would the, what would the somebody make a sound for what you think the waves would have sounded like then? Hmm. This is where we get creative in sociodrama. It's a little playful, people. So I call on your, your willingness to, to be playful. What you got, Skylar? What you got? Yeah, do that again for us. <laughs> okay, so there's the waves back there. You can hear them. Anybody else? The waves six months before COVID. What do you think it might have sounded like? Anybody can just raise their hand. You got something, Sean? Yep. <laughs> Supposed yeah. to be smooth. It sounded very smooth. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I heard smoothness. Yeah. And then when COVID hit last March, what do you suppose the waves sound like then? Initially, for me, it was like a vacuum. Let's hear what that might sound like, Becky. Well, I'd, I'm not going to make a vacuum sound, but okay, <laughs> okay Becky, like like an absence of sound, an absence of everything, uh -huh. an absence of information, an yeah. absence of future. Yeah. So, Becky, choose somebody who you think could make the sound of that. Becky. I'm going to go with that high school kid. Ooh, Skylar. Skylar, you're on point. What you got? Can you make it sound like a vacuum? The absence of sound in a way. Um. <laughs> <laughs> How's that, Becky? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like, like back in the old days when the TV would go off the air. Yeah. yeah. Becky, er, Skylar, can you do that one more time for us? That was excellent. <laughs> Yeah. Is that right, Becky? Yes. Okay. So I love what you did there. You went with the very beginning of COVID, where it's like the sound goes out, the absence of how do we do this? So as we move along a little further, a couple more weeks, a couple more, I mean, I remember debating with people about what this meant or didn't mean, or is this like the flu or not like the flu? And you know, there was a lot of conversation if you think back then. So does anybody you else know how much another? toilet paper you're going to need? Yes. Yes. I remember at one point we were going to make toilet paper birthday cakes. So that way people, we could give back toilet paper once we actually had toilet paper. So anybody else, a few months after, not just the beginning, Becky got us to the beginning, but as we move into those couple of months, what would be a sound of a wave at that point? Who's got something for us? And you can name something that was going on or happening, whatever you want to, to help us get there with you. Because it means different things to different people. Yes, Jan, what you got? Well, I think uh, starting in March, it was like, okay, or I, I had the feeling, you know, a couple of weeks and we'll... Uh, kind of shut down our living for a couple of weeks and then it will be over. And then mm -hmm. it got to about June and all of a sudden you realized, hey, we're in this for the long haul or mm -hmm. at least longer than we thought. So the waves began to intensify. Yeah. And, and we became more, life became more questionable. Mm -hmm. You yeah. didn't know what was coming next, you were kind of uh, a feeling of apprehensiveness was about uh, humanity and uh, humanity started really acting up or acting out, I should say. People started doing crazier things, the toilet paper fights, which had started before then. Um, it was just total craziness people buying baskets of groceries and going off and leaving them in the store yeah okay so in a way jen i think you just you brought two different waves right one wave was this wave of 
oh, this is going to be over in a few weeks. Yeah, that's We're, that was starting in March. Yeah, there, this oh, isn't really anything. And then just bigger waves, right? So right. what would be the sound of those bigger waves, do you think? Do you have a sense of it? Or do you want somebody to play that for you? Somebody can play that better than I can. Okay, why don't you choose somebody who could play uh, that? Let's let somebody raise their hand. Maybe the, we, we can get it like that. Okay, well then first let's do the sound of the kind of, oh, it's not gonna be anything. Okay, right? Somebody uh, raise your hand if they can make that sound. No takers. <laughs> They'll get there. Sometimes people just need a minute to warm up. Daniel, great. Okay, what's the sound of that? Ah, it's gonna be no big deal. What's yeah. that word? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the wave of that. Excellent. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now we need that wave of like, it's this is kind of a big deal. People are fighting over toilet paper and what's that wave sound like? This is big deal. Libby, were you trying to show us something there? I saw you getting up and getting excited. I made a sound. You didn't hear the sound? What? No. Let's hear it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's about right. We need to hear that at least two or three more times because that went on for a long time. Come on, Libby. Sean, help her out. You can help her. <laughs> yeah. Libby, right. let's, hear your, let's hear yours, Libby. <laughs> John, go ahead. You're next. And Libby? And Libby? I have one to more. keep going. Yeah, one more. Just one more. It was a long time. And Sean, end us out. I like Sean's better. It's an explosive wave, yes. They're, yeah well they're all part of it right and and it sounds different to every person on this call but we're calling it the society's voice so we're playing with this here okay and so then we get through gosh that probably took us march april may maybe even into june you know? into june too yeah people thought oh we're gonna start going on vacations now and everything no, no. Not, no what, Jen? What happened? Um, it, the numbers started going up. Uh, people, it just began to intensify. We didn't think it probably could, but uh, just watching the numbers on a daily basis or getting reports, it was really scary. And especially when people that you know start dying. Yeah, yeah. So and by the way, it, it was sad. Yeah, it was sad. And Harley just walked through here. So she just brought some of our hope and our compassion. She wandered away over there. She's watching the driveway. So, all right. So anything about the sound of the summer? What would you think of the sound of that summer? What about you, Rosie? You have an idea what the summer, the wave of the summer sounded like? What you got? Oh my goodness. Um, first of all, thank you, Katrina, for being here to this evening. I always look forward to um, you coming and um, thanks to uh, Dina and, and Daniel. Um, this time, it takes me there where as a healthcare worker, we expedited our pandemic protocol. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were in high mode and we had been preparing it for since like um, before December, 2020. And when you said like, go back to September, 2020, yep, yeah, we were already doing some of the legwork mm -hmm. then, even then yeah. we knew it was coming. So is there and so for- Yeah, go ahead, keep going. So for me, it was that um, it was already there. Yeah. And um, for me, it was expediting, you know, PPEs, you know, N95s, face masks, face shields, you know, making sure 
I had my own personal supply. My family had their own personal supply. I have high risk uh, family members, you know, just taking care of my family and expediting that and, and also doing my work too at the same time, taking care of myself uh, and then others. Yeah. And so the time. sound and, of that, what, what do you think it would be, Rosie? Ooh, I love the sound of that vacuum because it was like that for a while. That, but to me, it was like. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just held your breath because we were holding our breath, oh, you man. know, in that. I don't want to say crisis mode because we had to keep focused and working. We just stay focused. We still are. We still are. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. And I'm going to push us forward a bit to January, you know, when it was about January, December that we were starting to see the vaccine. And there are a lot of questions about that. You know, do we do it? Do we not do it? Is this the, the end all be all or, um, are we going to grow three heads from having the vaccine? You know, what, is, is this an okay thing to do? Um, but between December, January, February, March, we began to have this whole process around vaccines. And so how about, I'm just going to pick on people a little bit here because I know that there's a little uncertainty, a lack of spontaneity. So I'm going to invite Christy, what about for you? <laughs> when you think about that, that time, is there a sound of a wave that you would think of? Oh man, I'm, I've been waiting. I needed us to get a little further into this process. Okay, do you need, do you need to pass and we'll come back to you in a minute? Cause I can go no, over no, Marlene perfect. there. Okay. This is, perfect. this is my, my water sound is a water spout. Okay. I'm just spinning and <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. on the water and going bouncing dancing back and forth and spinning and spinning and what are we doing yeah. it's like a like the eye of the storm and a you know a little water spout is is small but it's all over the place it's in india it's here it's there it's the atlantic pacific indian ocean yeah. all over spinning yeah. spinning yeah yeah I think that's really well stated. And granted, other people might might look at that time very differently. And so again, we're just playing with this right now. We're just playing with what it sounds like and feels like for different people. And so that was that season. And I love that, Christy. I, I love how you said that. Because it was, well, for some people, it might feel like hope. Other people, it could feel like, gosh, I don't know that I can do that. I don't know that I'm willing to do that. I don't know what that means. I work with um, a group of women whose children have autism and I've worked with them for 13 years straight. So when I met them, their autistic children were three and four and, um, and they were severely uh, autistic. And now their kids are in high school and so forth. And um, uh, some of the people in this community, uh oh my. I have what looks like an almost dead battery and that would be inconvenient if I didn't stay here. Why? It looks like, hang on a second. I gotta make sure my battery works. For Sean, Sean, you might have to come over here and fix my battery. Just kidding. I'm gonna switch this out here. I'm trying to see if I'm having a, Okay, that's on. Why? There, okay. I guess I just didn't like that one spot. Okay, so we were talking about, um, oh, I was talking about the, my autism group. And, and they, um, many people in that community, um, they're struggled with vaccines. And I remember one point we talked about vaccines and it was like, well, do you ask people, have you heard the, had your vaccine? And, and the groups in there, they said, well, when somebody asked me if I had a vaccine, I just asked them, well, have you had a pap smear? <laughs> like, is it your business? <laughs> but that's become, it's become how we talk about this stuff. Is, is it our business? Is it not our business? And so, uh, you know, it, 
For some people, the vaccine means hope. For some people, the vaccine means, are you going to ask me? I also love, somebody said, um, I identify as being vaccined, <laughs> vaccinated. I thought that was adorable too. You know, we're, everybody's trying to figure out what their voice is and what their language is and what's right for them personally and who is, a, and I'm, I hope you can hear, I'm not saying at any way do I know what's right or wrong. I just know that it's part of our society's drama and we're here to talk about the story of the society. So Marlene, I'm going to call on you. If that's okay. So after that, you know, the vaccine got here and, you know, a lot of people did take the vaccine and, some didn't, and and then what happened in this last spring, summer? What did you see or what did you experience? So I think some of the uncertainty kind of was not as intense as January, kind of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And... I would say the sound wouldn't be as intense as maybe January of 2021, but I'm trying to figure out what that sound would sound like. So maybe just the, mm -hmm. just a bit not as loud and intense, maybe. Yeah. But then the, the variant came, mm -hmm. and I think the, the noise would be that intense and louder. Okay, well, what's the sound when the variant came? <laughs> All over again. Right, right. Maybe. I'm not good at sound, so. You did perfect. <laughs> Can you do those two sounds one more time? They were excellent. The first one was. Was this. And then the variant then, came. When the very. <laughs> right, right. That's the best I can do. That was Excellent. Excellent. Okay. All right. So then um, how about you, Sean? How about current? So the variant came and as Marlene shared, it got louder again. At least that's her perspective from our society. And so then what about now, Sean? What, what do you think you would say or share about now? In sounds or opinion? <laughs> Both. Whatever you wish to share. It, uh, I, I'm, I just confused. You know, I'm as confused as anybody. There's so much different uh, information out there, and I'm a, a Manson, so I don't consider myself a stupid person. And I know some friends of mine are scientists too. And it's amazing how much the political beliefs of people can sway where we would come together on any yeah. anything concrete you know it's like the scientific method we laugh about this i mean i've got a made-up consulting company with one of my friends and he and i are on complete opposite ends of our opinions of this and uh that's it's strange to me you know it's like uh this is my uh, my best friend who we agree on everything and are totally opposite on this so that's uh that's something new for me to experience mm -hmm. and it, it pushes me to have a level of acceptance to let, let people have their own opinion. You know, I want to strong arm people and make them believe the way I, I, I feel. So it's given me a chance to, to grow and, and say, you know what, you don't get to be right about everything. You know, there's no right or wrong. If we knew there was some absolute, there wouldn't be so much up in the air about this. So right. I guess in that there's an intelligent take on it. And it's a, uh, you know, I had a trip scheduled that I almost had to cancel because I got COVID and when I, all the people I was supposed to see freaked out about me coming out to visit them. And I'm like, well, you can't spread it after you're sick, but they didn't believe that. I took a test. I was negative and I still was refused entry to people's homes. So it's been yeah. different experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you have a sound for what, what that sound is right now? If I think about it, I'd think about the way the wind whips up out of nowhere. And sometimes, you know, you might have a little dust devil here and then it's calm and then. Uh, yeah. Like there's no continuity to it. It's all over the place. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So anybody else, just because what's going on right now is so relevant. Um, and that's where we all are today. Uh, I allowed every 
different people's perspective about this and this and this to, to hold true. But I'm wondering, that's Sean's perspective. Anybody else have a perspective about what's happening today or a sound of the wave of today? Anybody else? And maybe what Sean has offered us is exactly on point and you would all just sort of double that. But if somebody has a different perspective, Skylar, you're looking at us like you got something for us. Um, my what perspective you, for today. And what's it feel like to be sound? a junior with everything going on right now in high school? Like as a sound? Yeah, as a sound and give us some data. What do you think, what's it feel like to you? Um, well, I mean, it, again, it goes through waves, I guess. I would say it feels like a dog bark. Ah, dog bark. Yeah, yeah so like... Some dogs are scary and sometimes school can be stressful and hard and like a pain. And then other dogs, as in Bruno's, is nothing and it's very calm and quiet and it's fun and yeah. Okay, well, let's hear this dog bark. What you got for us, Skylar? Hey, um, <laughs> the scary one? Yeah. Is probably... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That. that was perfect. That's great. Perfect. Yes. My bad. And then the um come here, Bruno. And then the um this is Bruno, by the way. Hi Bruno. Hi, Bruno. And then the non-scary one is probably like a puppy, like a woof, woof, woof. Yeah. So yeah, it. that's my two sounds. I love it. I love the extra dog barking. I think that's just fantastic. Perfect. Sorry. Perfect. No, no, sorry. Is that, that that's actually, perfect. You know, and that's what we love about something like psychodrama or sociodrama is that there's always some clever little moments, you know, just like that. I think every one of you started to giggle when you heard that dog bark. And that's what the model's about, right? It's about getting us to talk about something that's very complicated, but also find our humor in it. And I like to talk, I was doing a workshop not long ago where we talked about the treasure and the trauma. What is the treasure and the trauma that with, with all that is so complicated, we're still really learning. You know, Becky really spoke a lot about, there was a lot of really good waves, really pleasurable waves. <laughs> learning and growth. Marlene, I think, talked about her own internal self-growth. Many of you did. And I have no doubt that every anybody willing to show up here on a Tuesday night on your computer with all the Zoom everybody's doing, our people are interested in growth. <laughs> and so I believe each one of you has found ways to find growth in the perspective, whether you're showing your face on the camera or whether you're just listening. I believe that every person who is taking the time tonight to be here is in a position of growth or looking for growth. You know, maybe you're feeling like, well, what is my growth supposed to be? I don't understand it. Um, it. It just feels like these waves are taking you down. What do you have for us, Jan? Yeah. Well, I, this is my thoughts. Um, and maybe I shouldn't express this, but to me, Please do. We, all voices matter. Not only has COVID made us sick, it has, it has pulled humanity apart. It has, uh, it, it's, it's very sad. It's like uh, everybody should have their opinions but gee, many Christmas, I see, even with my friends, educated people practically fist fighting over should I get the vaccination or should I not? Or And the, uh, the country's trying to poison us and uh, all the other things that they come up with. Um, it's just a, a very sad time, a very depressing time. So is there a sound for that wave of sadness, of polarity that you could offer us, Jan? How about heavy crying, sobbing? 
Yeah. Can you, can you make, can you make that sound for us? What it sounds like? Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, well, okay. You can choose somebody, Jan. I got a lot of people here that probably want to help you. Like Lisa. I got this girl, Lisa. Lisa, I see you there. Go for it. Oh, uh, Skylar says, yeah. Come on, Lisa. What does heavy, heavy crying sound like? It's, yeah. What you got? Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lisa. I, that's good. There has been horror and despair, but I also know that on the same level, has there been anybody that even in all of this, you're finding yourself, you're finding a brand new path or a different way to be or a new level of intimacy. Is there anybody that has experienced that from this time? I find myself yeah. digging deeper for, yeah. for comfort, for strength. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, taking more, more classes. I'm spirituality. Uh, I'm, uh, that has always been a focus of mine anyway, but I felt like I, I lost my way. Yeah. And that was uh, very sad, very depressing for me. But uh, through taking some classes and doing more reading, uh, little by little, I'm gaining that strength back, but also... I have recognized that it's got to be a new path. We're not going to live life the same way that we have in the past. Yeah. There's no going back mm -hmm. to the way it used to be. It's we've got to create what what we're looking for. And that's really important is people do have to realize that their decisions make a difference. Their choices make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I love it. And what you didn't say, Jan, and I know, Sean, you had your hand up, so I want to hear from you, too. What you didn't say, but what I heard in a way is that that in some ways, this experience, this last year and a half or two years, if you will, has offered you a compass that you didn't know you were looking for. Exactly. So, Sean, how about for you? You were going to share something about the positive nature of right now. Yes, it uh it forced me to be resilient, you know, it forced the people around me to be resilient in a lot of the made up parameters in society, you know, like my employer and everybody, those seem to have dissipated. I think it made people take a look at what's really important to them, their relationships. I, uh, you know, as a, an addict in recovery, there's no way in hell I could have gone through something like this, you know, without sequestering myself and I would have died. And so it was good to learn how to live, to be around my girlfriend, you know, be around somebody all the time and, and uh, to, to be resilient, to take care of myself. And it also afforded me plenty of time to find other ways to occupy myself that were healthy, mm -hmm. but what I call outer circle behaviors. So it was, uh, it was uh, overall to me, it was a good experience. You know, I don't like the way the state of the world right now, but mm -hmm. I can find some good in anything. So, mm -hmm. so there's the good. There it is. So, Sean, do you have a sound for that, you know, what you're sharing with, which is that connection along with Jan's idea of the compass? Is there a sound for that wave? I think more of a more of a wind. You know, I picture like standing mm -hmm. on, a, on a rock and, you know, looking into the future, not knowing what's coming. And yeah, you're moving forward. So the wind's blowing over. It's like... It's not threatening. It's just a sound. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, and I think that in some ways that's our call. You know, Jan talked about that there's a spirituality process happening here, that this is our charge, is how do we take what's happening around us and allow it to expand ourselves? I know I could even say for myself, I have really had a chance to go inward and reflect and 
I, I believe that through this experience, I will have a very different life. I think in the next six months to a year, my life will look incredibly different. And part of that's all that reflection and all the time I've spent and um, really being inside four walls and trying to decide, I'm going to be 50 this January, by the way. And so the question is at 50, is this who I want to be? Is this, am I going in the right direction for myself? And where do I want to move my rudder while I'm out there in that sea of life? And I hope each of you are considering that. So I'm going to stay with that just for a moment longer. When each of you consider, if, if you see this as a call, as a charge to your spirituality, to help you find your compass, to make some new decisions about where you want to take your little tugboat or your sailboat or your yacht or whatever it is you're wandering around out there in that water. What do you, what do you need? And we talked about what the dog could bring and what, what she represented. And she's gone through here a couple of times. Where are you at, Harley? Mm, oh, she's napping on the couch. So, but what do you need for your compass to become more alive? What do you need to really lean into after we leave here tonight, you'll be back to your own space. You'll be back on your own, away from each other. But when you think about your spiritual walk, anybody have a sense of what you're needing? And spirituality can mean different things to different people. So you get to decide what that means. But it's about your internal compass, your GPS. Are you headed in the right direction? I'm just going to, yeah, Chan, what is it you're needing? Um, mine has got to do with, uh, divine guidance, just trust divine guidance, because I personally am not at a point yet where I know the answer to that. I think there is an answer, but I, it's like to be determined, but so I'm going to go with, uh, trust divine guidance. Okay. All right. Anybody else? We've got trusting divine guidance, whatever that means to each individual. What else is it you're needing? And maybe you hadn't even thought about it until tonight. And maybe as you're sitting here, it's coming to you. I'm going to say for me, this season I'm in discernment. Just discernment. Some, uh, well, I'll just use one word, discernment. I, I need just some clarity of, you know, is it my voice? <laughs> Is it God's voice? Is it the world? I just need some clarity and discernment. Yeah. I would say that that's what I, I need. Okay. I need that discernment to be my GPS right now. Yeah. Looking for discernment, that clarity. Whose voice is it I need to be listening to in, in order to get my GPS in the right direction? Who else? What is it you're needing? And it could even be somebody who we can't see your face, but maybe you're listening. You're welcome to just raise that little hand on the computer and we'd love to hear from anybody. But who else knows something that they're needing? I need less alone time. I ended a relationship because he never gave me any alone time. And then the pandemic hit and I'm like, okay, I got what I asked for. <laughs> now you're saying I'm kind of like Skylar right like I, I'm not so sure I wanted that boyfriend to go away or girlfriend to go away and so now how do I who do I want to spend my time with now yeah great so that connection again that intimacy into me see yeah just Christy I see your head. my life without having to have so much alone time yes I think I need I would need far less alone time in my next relationship I love it. I love it. Long time to last me for the rest of my life. Yes. Christy, what is it you're needing as you hear the sounds of these waves and you consider this compass, your GPS? And deeper connections. A lot what like Libby's saying. Can you say more about those deeper connections, Christy? What is it that you're calling for? What's the charge for you? I think it's, it's that... Um, like when you say the word intimacy, that resonates with me, but just to be really seen and to see people like I don't have to be with people who think the same way I do. 
Um, I, you don't have to be vaxxed or unvaxxed or have natural antibodies or it, it just, I just want deep connection in it to be okay. And we can be different and think differently. And I respect you and you respect me. And I want to have those safe people that we can get past that and then go, go even deeper into life and friendships and work and whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mutual respect and an ability to have more depth in relationship. Great. Awesome. Christy, anybody else? What is it you're needing? Yeah. Sean, what are you needing? Oh, based on my session today, <laughs> less, re less reactivity to the people around me. Yeah. You know, I, I've found that uh, during this time, people are, are volatile. And if you're open to them, it opens dialogue and you have these moments of intimacy that can be experienced. And you know, I spent my whole life walking around with like, nah, wanting to fight the whole world and yes. just trying to have some acceptance and understand other people are scared and freaked out too. Right. And uh, there's some, uh, you know, there's humility and an, an ability to, to be in, in support of others and to, you know, let my shield down and know it's all right to be afraid. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. still, I need more of the same. I mean, my, my life's exploded during these last couple of years in, in a positive direction. So mm -hmm. yeah, either way, it's, I'm, I'm trying to stay on, a, um, stay, up, stay on a good side of things. Yeah. Well, I, I feel too, what you're saying is really an expansion of what Christy is saying, that if I can be less reactive and I can, I can listen to you and you can have a different view or a different belief and I can hear you with respect, I can go into dialogue rather than monologue, right? Like, and if I can go into dialogue, we can deepen that spirituality and we can have deeper connections. Great, great. Yes. Anybody else, what you think you might be needing as we're sharing here, as we're being together? Anything you wanna say about what you might be needing? Well, how about if we let Skylar, our our junior have the last word. What do you think's needed right now for people your age? What are you needing right now? Um, yeah. What I am needing, I probably need more people around me to like support me and what I choose to do. And like, and I mean, especially my parents and my family mm -hmm. and like what I'm doing. And then I probably also need more like, what, I, what the other two people were saying was like closer connections with like my friends and deeper and being able to like trust them with everything yeah. and not have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's a call to those of us on this call that are adults as we're looking at our adolescent population that how can we as adults be more present for you, Skylar? because we are adults and we're going through this and we're struggling. And if we're struggling, we're probably not showing up for the young people as well as we need to. And so how can we model better for you? How can we be more available to you? How can we as adults, if we're walking through the grocery store and we see a, a six-year-old or a 16-year-old or a, you know 18-year-old, just nod to them, let them know that we see you and that your journey really matters. Because, you know, in a decade or two, you're going to be writing stories and books and poems and music and movies about this, this time. And this is going to be reflected in the history of our world and what this meant and how did we show up as a community? Did we find ways to get our GPS closer towards divinity, connection, deeper intimacy, or is the younger generation just going to talk about our polarity, about our reactivity, about the waves that knocked everybody into each other? Or is it going to be the way that we found ways to come together? Somebody was saying something to me about, um, you know, the importance of being in it together. Are we, are we on the boat together? Do we all have a seat on the boat? 
are, are we able to carry each other through? And I thought that's a really wise idea. How can we carry each other through? So this was my, my offering today. This was my charge to show up for you and to consider. And I originally thought it would just be the year in review, but as we sat together, it seemed relevant and, and masterful to go all the way back to pre-COVID and what this has meant. And I hope what you can end our night on is what do you need personally? What does the younger generation need from you as a model or as an adult in two and three decades? How do you want them to be writing the story of our Titanic? <laughs> Did we throw the kids off the boat or the elderly off the boat? Or were we mutually respectful? And where we haven't been, can we change that now? Can we get our GPS going in the direction that's more about spirituality, humanity, and hope? Or... Do we have more lessons to learn before we can get there? And I don't know. That'll be different for each community and each individual. So we played with the waves today. We played with the water. We played with sound. I thank each of you that really showed up and let, let us see your faces. And those who we didn't see your faces, but you hung in there and you stayed with us. And I can see all your names and I'm aware of who stayed. And it really matters that you could enjoy or be present with us as we traveled this path together. So Daniel, you mentioned offering time for a few questions if anybody has questions. So it's 824. We have about five or six minutes left of our theoretic time. So if there are no questions, we'll probably close a little bit early, but does anybody have a a question they want to ask or even a reflection you know what this has meant to you or or uh anything you'd like to say thank you ah you're welcome you're welcome jan. sure thing yeah yeah jan do you have a question no i just want to say i really appreciate this time that we've had mm -hmm. together i appreciate you're giving your time. Yeah. And it has been um, a very calming time. Yes. I feel I feel better having been here. Yeah. So Sorry. thank you very much. Yes. Great. I love that. That makes it all worthwhile, Jen. Thank you for your words. Yeah. Great. Anybody else? A reflection or a question? Anybody would like to offer before we close our experience? Yes, Sean? I just wanted to add something simple about talking to young people. I was around some of my younger cousins. They're probably, you know, less than eight years old. They'd report in, and instead of just being like, oh, yeah, that's nice, I'd say, oh, yeah, how do you feel about it? And they'd be confused because nobody ever asked young people how they feel. And this started out as a joke, you know, 40 years ago for me. And how do you feel about it? And it's, it's provocative. So I would encourage... That's a tool that can be used to talk to young people. Hey, and I, I wanted to thank you, Katrina. I was going to go to the cinema, and I felt a tremendous amount of guilt. Like, nope, you should support your therapist. He's done so much for you, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know who your therapist is, so uh, <laughs> confirm or deny whoever that is. But I love it. I'm glad that you were here with us, Sean. Fantastic. Okay. Who else? A reflection or a question? If you oh. Kimberly, I saw your thumbs up. I saw it. You, you've been seen. Did you want to say something, Kim? We'll give her about 30 seconds to unmute. Oh, I don't have a voice very much. Um, so I'm actually waiting on my COVID test to get back. <laughs> um, yeah, this has not been a fun time. But it's um, actually, to hear how you guys all went through it, believe it or not, where I live, we, we didn't really ever shut down. And it is just now hitting us in this area. Mm -hmm. and to see how everybody was able to make it through and knowing that we're all going to be okay. It's, it's mm -hmm. um, refreshing. I will tell you that my last year, as Katrina confirmed, it, it was a blur. Um, I lost my husband right before um, 2021. And, you know, that's uh, strange thing is, is I don't really even, you were asking what it was like dealing with COVID. My life was so screwed up during 2020. 
I don't right. really remember it. Yeah. And um, it was more of a relief, something I could put focus on that instead of what was gotcha. going on in my life. Mm-hmm. But yeah. thank you. That was a lot to say in a very short time. Sorry. <laughs> well said, Ken. Thank you for sharing your good. heart with us. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Katrina. Yeah. yeah. And, and much blessings to you as you, you went through that loss. And many people on here went through different losses, but to lose your partner, your husband, that's a, a great loss. So thank you for sharing that. Anybody else, a question or a reflection? Yeah, Christy. I just want to say thank you, Katrina, how much I appreciate this space to just come together and talk about the big, hard, ugly things. And we don't have to pick a side or, or be against each other. And it just feels really supporting and loving. I feel welcomed and I, everyone's face that I saw and even the names that I saw, I feel very connected and glad they're here tonight. So thank you for creating this space. Yeah, well, we can thank Daniel and Dina more than me, but yeah, this is a a sacred space. And that's one of the things I think sociodrama does really well. It's not about one person's opinion. It's that every single voice matters. And we want to hear it from all sides, right. all angles, because that is the true story of the society. It's not one person's story. Then that would be a psychodrama. But the sociodrama is the drama and the voice of the society. Any other statement? We've got two more minutes on our clock if anybody wants to say anything. Yes, Rosie? Um, yes, thank you again, Christina. Uh, uh, Christina, Chris, uh, Christina. <laughs> you just call me Cat. Just call me Cat. Cat. Yes, because um, um, I love your whole process. And I think what I want to say is um, what I was thinking about, like even just those three words, because it's what I have learned. I have learned self compassion through this process, through this year and a half. And I've learned it. Um, at my, in my career, but I really have um, been able to um, learn it here with D2 counseling. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a good demonstration of that, um, even just by just that other word of change and being able to adapt and, um, and, and, and just go with the flow and, you know, um, and just the awareness and, but the self-compassion, it's something that I didn't realize I had to work on. But once we did as a group, as a team, as a, and it just seems like it just carries over. So, um, and, you know, speaking to the adolescents, it just, that compassion, that compassion and being that focused listener, I think it's, it's just so important for each of us, not only to give, but to receive. So thank you. I, yeah, and I love that. That's a great something to end on. The word focused listener. How can we all be focused listeners? And Lisa, you might not have heard this. We want to first say thank you for bringing Skylar so we could have a young person. But she talked about the importance of focused listening from mom and dad. And since you're just my friend, I can tell you. And Skylar, since Lisa and James are my friends, I'll, I'll get them more listening. And I'll listen to you. You can call me anytime, my love. Text me anytime, all day, all night. But I, yeah, I think that's the perfect last couple of words. How can we hear the charge to become the focused listener? Mm -hmm. What is the wave and the ripple and the ripple effect of that sound? So Daniel and Dina, anything you want to say as we close? Well, just thank you very much, Katrina. We appreciate it. I want to thank everybody that attended tonight. It was such a, a, an honor to participate uh, mm-hmm. with, with our process tonight. And uh, we'd like to thank Unity Church for their participation in this. And we would invite you all back to the uh, lecture next month on the 19th, where we have the director of the uh, Center for Spiritual Development talking about recovery. And so with that, we thank each of you. And again, Katrina, thank you so much. Katrina, thank you. you. I want to just remark that you um, demonstrated and modeled how we can build community Mm. in a really divisive time and how we can successfully do that on Zoom. Yes. And I don't know what we would have done without the brilliant sound effects by our actors and actresses, but... It was quite, it was quite powerful and quite effective. 
I, I want to just share a quote that goes along with what you're saying that I just read this morning and I just loved it. Um, observation without judgment is the highest form of intelligence. Yeah. And I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Can we yeah. observe? Can we hear each other and not judge? Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's a spiritual walk, I believe. So yeah. thank you for modeling that for us, a Katrina. Absolutely. And my favorite was Bruno the dog. The dog yes. barking is <laughs> the best yeah. part of the whole night. I love dogs that bark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Thank you all, thank you all yeah. so much. Okay. Bye -bye. Cheers. Good night.